everyone, and welcome to the Google for Startups Accelerator Climate Change Virtual Demo Day. My name is Jason Scott, head of Google's startup developer ecosystem here in the US. And back on April 22nd, Earth Day, we announced our first North American Google for Startups Accelerator cohort of startups focused specifically on applying artificial intelligence and machine learning to combat climate change. The inaugural cohort of the Google for Startups Accelerator Climate Change has brought together a diverse set of startups and founders from across North America. And after 10 weeks, we reached the end of an amazing program. Alongside over 200 Google mentors, our founders have tackled projects focused on product, designing UX, technical infrastructure, data and machine learning, growth and sales, and of course, people and leadership. And as you can imagine, we've kept them quite busy. In a moment, we'll allow each of our 10 founders the opportunity to tell you more about their impactful companies and team. So let's get started. As a reminder, each founder will be given about five minutes to present their company. We will then have time for one question per company. And of course, our teams are available in chat, so get your questions ready. First up, it is my pleasure to introduce the team at 75F. Coming to us from Bloomington, Minnesota, 75F is a vertically integrated building intelligence company using smart sensors, controllers, and software to make commercial buildings more efficient and comfortable. Hey folks, let me start uh, with a virtual audience raise of hands. How many of you have ever felt too hot or too cold in your homes or offices? My journey starts with your raised hands. When my daughter was one, we moved her into her own bedroom, but she would wake up in the middle of the night crying. And I found it's because the temperature in her room was dropping about 10 degrees at night. By profession, I'm a network engineer, so my claim to fame is I had one of the world's first terabit routers sitting in my garage. But when I found this problem with my daughter as a self-respecting engineer, I quit my job to fix the damn problem, which is why we are talking today. As I embarked on this journey, I came across this building, the Edge in Amsterdam. It's the world's most advanced building at that point. It's got 40,000 sensors that cater to the indoor air quality, the lighting, as well as the temperature of the occupants inside. But there's a dirty dark secret. The building controls alone cost over $50 million. And the primary reason for that is that building controls are kind of like Lego blocks. They're very flexible. You can do a lot of things with them. But ultimately, it takes a Lego master to come in and make a bespoke solution. If you think about it, I'm from the IT industry. In some ways, this is like the computing industry back in the 70s. Back then, you brought an Apple I, you brought it home, you sorted it together, you learned programming in basic to solve your own problems. Kind of like the Flintstones. Today, it's inconceivable to not walk into a mall, you want to buy an iPhone, and you want to be productive in three minutes. If you ever take five, you're probably screaming bloody murder. But in the controls industry, it's still very common for people to come in and make this bespoke solution and do a huge amount of system integration. And this may look like a pretty old picture, except it was taken last year. For us, that is an opportunity to disrupt. So what we decided to do is create a complete vertically integrated building control solution that takes into account all the things which are really required to make a building intelligent. It starts with the sensors that measure things like temperature, humidity, light, occupancy, sound levels, anything which is required for indoor air quality and productivity. In addition, we have this concept of what we call software defined hardware, which goes and takes and controls any piece of HVAC equipment that we're connecting to. The third piece that we have is a centralized controller that aggregates all the data wirelessly. It also runs the control algorithms for a part of the building. CCO then takes the data and feeds it into the cloud, and that's where we run our machine learning algorithms as well as our advanced analytics. So a complete turnkey out-of-the-box solution that scales for buildings from about 10,000 square feet all the way over to some of the larger buildings we are in are over a million square feet. Think of us as providing what we call OE Square, an enhanced occupant experience so people are more comfortable and productive inside the space at the same time, catering to what we call the operational expense. So it's called OE squared. So you want to make sure that we're saving energy and the system pays for itself. The way we do that is by having millions of data points coming in each and every day, which combined with the weather forecast inform our ML algorithms. 
So you end up having far more even temperatures and better indoor air quality throughout the building. Another interesting thing is because it's wireless and we've got a huge amount of these configuration pieces done in the software, it's about 80% faster to install and cheaper to install and 10X faster to install than a traditional control solution. So you end up having far more even temperatures, better indoor air quality, and more importantly, about 30 to 50% in energy savings. And this has been highly vetted through a number of trials through independent uh, organizations and utilities. And we wrap it all up by giving a portal and apps which give live insight to the facility managers. It's features like that which have actually led to the widespread industry recognition that we've had and a marquee list of customers with millions and tens of millions of square feet of deployed solution. Uh, just as an example, we're partnering with Daikin. They're the world's largest HVAC company and they're actually going to be using 75F controls as part of their rollout with all their equipment. And we're backed by some of the biggest names in climate change, including people like uh, Bill Gates backed Breakthrough Energy Ventures and CI, the world's largest climate focused fund. Uh, also a fantastic team of people who are backing us in terms of the board itself. And we're about 130 strong with a seasoned exec team that's been through a number of startups. And some of us have been together for over five years at 75F. Uh, we'd love to show more and about 75F. So please uh, reach out to us. I'll leave you one closing thought. So 10 years from now, when you're sitting in your driverless car, can you imagine that buildings are going to be run the way they are? Of course not. Someone's going to make a change, and we believe it's going to be us. Thank you. Thank you to 75F for kicking things off for us. A question from the audience. Do you have plans to scale your operations? And if yes, what is your plan to expand your business across the world? Jason, thanks for the question. That's very interesting. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, we are aggressively expanding worldwide. We just uh, signed an extension of our A1 round to fund, fund that expansion, and that was led by Siemens. Uh, one of the ways we do this is we actually look for partners who can really help us scale. So the Daikin partnership that I talked about, that's an example of one of those. Uh, the Siemens investment is one of those. There's a huge amount of complementary offering in terms of the product and also the vision of uh, the go-to-market and how buildings are going to be run with people like Siemens. And so what we really look for is companies who would normally be considered competitors, but we try to make them into partners so that we can actually go ahead and scale this worldwide. Right? We believe the challenges of climate change are so large, no one single company can do this. We believe that we can provide a technology stack that perhaps others who already have a distribution network can take and scale. And that is a go-to market plan as well. Thank you again to the 75F team. Up next, we'll hear from Block Power, based in Brooklyn, New York. Block Power is providing software and financial tools to analyze, finance, and manage the challenge of converting millions of urban buildings off of fossil fuels. Off to the team to tell you more. Hello, my name is Donnell Baird. I'm the founder of Block Power, and we are gonna talk about how to turn buildings into Teslas. So there's 5 million medium-sized, small and medium enterprise buildings in urban environments or financially underserved geographies. These buildings waste $100 billion of year per year on fossil fuels. Um, they spread COVID-19 from room to room or classroom to classroom if there's a school. Um, and they emit about 7% of US greenhouse gas emissions, so of total emissions across the economy, these 5 million buildings are responsible for 7%. The cost of not upgrading and fixing these buildings with sustainability, modern uh, green energy equipment, that cost is massive. Um, it's about $1.2 trillion worth of green equipment upgrades that are required in these buildings. And over 150 American cities have passed laws and mandates that their entire city must be 100% green uh, by 2030, 2040, or 2050. So at Block Power, we will turn these 5 million buildings into Teslas. We're gonna make these buildings electric, smart, with no fossil fuels. 
right now our country is is mired in four crises. We have the we have the continuing COVID nineteen pandemic. We have a climate crisis that's getting worse and worse as the West, the American West, is on fire due to drought induced wildfires. Um, we have a financial crisis, um, and particularly in the small business sector, where we need more capital and more investment to rebuild uh, the economy. And what that translates to is a civil rights and a jobs crisis in low and moderate income communities across the country. We still have tens of millions of unemployed Americans and voting rights and racial and economic equality are an issue. So we can address all this, we believe by greening buildings. The problem is the current process for greening buildings is too complex, too manual, too expensive. An individual building owner here in the middle, they have to navigate four or five, six different uh, vendors and firms and construction companies and engineering firms and utility permits and government permits in order to figure out how to make their building more sustainable. That's too hard. It's too much friction. So what we've done is we're reducing that friction because we've built a unified platform to analyze, finance, and upgrade green buildings across America. So we're going to analyze the necessary green equipment upgrades on an individual basis for 5 million buildings. We're going to finance these buildings. We think it's about 560 billion to get started and there's a you know you got to double that to to do the whole thing but we'll take a phase 1 phase 2 approach with financing. And then last you actually have to send contractors into the field who are going to install the smart green cutting edge modern equipment on a building by building basis that's going to reduce fossil fuel consumption by 30, 50, 70%. We use machine learning to generate individualized green building scopes of work and sustainability scores for millions of buildings. That allows us to lease the building's green equipment. We can project manage each construction project. We can analyze each project. We can monitor it once it's installed. Um, utilities, energy utilities, governments, construction firms, and folks in the insurance industry, they use our scopes of work and our scores in order to understand and facilitate green buildings transactions. So if you think of a mortgage to a building that's now going green, it's more valuable, it's healthier, it's smarter, that increases the building's valuation. And so the mortgage underwriting has to incorporate that. So fundamentally, our scores will end up being like a FICO score or a miles per gallon score when you buy a car or Carfax if you buy a used car. So we finance and manage projects. Um, we got 500 projects coming down the line in New York City. It's going to cost about $150 million of investment. It's going to generate $30 million over the next 24 months. And our software in New York City has cut costs by as high as 90% on our projects. So now our 5 million buildings can transact and go green. Our solutions are working. We've completed projects in 1,000 buildings in New York City. 3% of the New York City market. We made about 10 million bucks. And next, we want to do 3% of the United States, 150,000 buildings, $15 billion worth of green building transactions. And so that's block power. We're super excited to be a part of the Google for Startups climate cohort. And we want you to join us in turning buildings into Teslas and averting climate disaster. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Block Power team for yet another awesome presentation. And now a question for you. How do you plan to gather city level building data that allows you to efficiently scale to additional cities? So we're gonna purchase a bunch of uh, data from other companies that have data, but really we're forming large partnerships with local governments and with energy utility companies. If you think about it, a local government has data on all of the local buildings in order to collect property taxes, and energy companies have data on all the buildings in order to provide electricity and fossil fuels uh, energy to all of the buildings. And so by partnering with them and aggregating government and utility data sets, we're able to aggregate the data that we need, throw it in our data lake, run our applications on top of it. What's been interesting is some of these Utilities and governments have chosen to invest in block power, just like a venture capitalist. And so when they invest, 
we, we, we have them share data with us as a condition of their investment. Thanks. Another fantastic job and congratulations to Block Power. Next, I'm thrilled to introduce Carbocrete, a Montreal-based startup whose concrete making solution completely eliminates the need for cement, making it cheaper and stronger than traditional concrete, all through an overall carbon negative process. Hi, my name is Yuri Mitko and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Carbocrete, a carbon removal technology company based in Montreal, Canada. Carbocrete has developed and patented a process that enables the production of cement-free carbon negative concrete. What we do is we license that technology to concrete makers for use in their existing facilities. What I'd like to do is show you a short video that describes the Carbocrete process, and then I'll talk a little bit about our company and where we're at in our development. Carbocrete was founded in 2016, and since then we've grown into a company of 25 plus employees, uh, most of whom work on our R&D team. So they're working on optimizing our process, uh, as well as developing new products for the masonry and precast markets. We're currently in the midst of a uh, pilot project that is going to see us uh, ramp up production at a local concrete maker's uh, plant uh, to industrial scale, which in our case is 25,000 concrete masonry units per day. The pilot project is also going to provide us with a pathway to certification, which is a necessary step in our acquiring the customers that we need uh, in order to help us hit the target that we've set for ourselves, which is uh, the, to enable the production of one gigaton of carbon negative concrete by 2030. So in order to do that, we're going to need to expand beyond masonry products, and a lot of that development work is already underway in our lab. We've secured MOUs with... Uh, a number of local concrete manufacturers that are very excited to use uh, our technology. Um, but what we need to do next is ramp up our business development efforts in the target markets that we've identified. So to that end, um, we are going to be kicking off our Series A raise next month. And we're very keen on meeting with any investors that have an interest in carbon tech uh, and an interest in financing technological solutions um, to decarbonizing the built environment. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carbocrete. And our audience would love to know more about how you plan to scale your production to meet demand once your technology becomes increasingly sought after. Is that your biggest challenge to a, for large scale success? 
If so, how do you plan to address it? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, the key element of our supply chain is the availability of steel slag. So uh, the way we've been proceeding uh, is we identify a steel mill that can act as a steel slag site. We draw a 200 kilometer circle around it, and then we target concrete makers that are within that centroid. And the reality is that uh, where you make steel, you tend to make concrete. Uh, what's involved on our end uh, is uh, when we engage with the customer is that we provide um, the technical support that's required to retrofit uh, a concrete making facility. So that's really human resources and it's very scalable. In terms of the biggest challenge that we're facing, I'd say it's the stand-up of a grinding facility that is at or adjacent uh, to the steel mill uh, that we've identified as a slag source. Um, slag needs to be ground to a particular fineness in order to be used in our process. Um, and so the way we're addressing that particular challenge is we're working with Harsco, uh, which is a company that is the world's largest um, processor of steel slag. Um, they're an investor in our company, uh, and we have a global steel slag supply agreement with them. Uh, and they're really the world experts in terms of uh, how you process slag. So that's how we're handling that particular challenge. Such awesome work. Up next, we have Anexor Bioenergy from Franklin, Tennessee. Anexor Bioenergy delivers renewable energy using organic, biomass, and plastic feedstock, helping to mitigate climate change while addressing global waste overabundance challenges. Thanks, Jason. It's uh, been a pleasure working with the Google team and our fellow Accelerated cohorts, and we're excited to share the Anexor story. We created Anexor to solve a very big problem. The world has a waste problem that's impacting our climate and the way we live. From plastic waste here in Nashville, Tennessee, to plastic waste polluting our rivers, our oceans, and our beaches, and businesses worldwide sending more and more waste to landfills. The world also needs more clean, distributed electricity to help end energy poverty and to provide energy resiliency to businesses throughout the world. We at Anextra Bioenergy have created a new product like no other to help solve these problems. After five years of stealth product development, we are very proud to introduce the Anextra BioCHP system, a renewable energy and carbon conversion solution to help solve the world's organic and plastic waste problem. My name is Lee Jestings. I'm the founder and CEO of Anextra Bioenergy, and I'm excited to introduce our company and our product is part of the Google Climate Change Demo Day. Today, we're hoping to find investors and potential customers that share our vision. The Nextro BioCHP system is a small-scale, on-site renewable energy solution contained in a 20-foot custom shipping container. The BioCHP can be installed next to a manufacturing or commercial facility here in the United States, at a medical clinic or hotel in a hurricane-prone island nation or in an isolated community in Africa. The BioCHP has several unique advantages. Most importantly, it can be installed where organic waste, plastic waste is located, avoiding expensive landfill, transportation, and tipping fee costs. It can use almost any organic, biomass, or plastic waste as a feedstock in any combination. It provides 24-7 continuous power and can operate off-grid or island mode and is an ideal base load for solar-based microgrid. Each system produces 75 kilowatts of power, 125 kilowatts of thermal energy, and systems can be aggregated for more power as needed. The thermal energy can be used to generate hot water for process drying or provide heat to desalinate water, which is urgently needed in remote areas. Each system will offset up to 1,000 tons a year of harmful greenhouse gases by reducing fossil fuel-based energy emissions reducing methane emissions from organ waste organics, and reducing transportation emissions. The BioCHP can install the commission within two days. It's not a major construction project. It's very important to note that the BioCHP does not use a gasification technology. and does not suffer the same economic scaling issues. Our system consists of a patented, elegantly simple system that can fuel organic waste into a custom-built microturbine co-developed with one of the largest turbine companies in the world. The U.S. manufactured microturbine is designed to be replaced every one to two years, allowing us to install systems in the most aggressive climate locations in the world. 
The microturbines are installed with quick release fittings and can be easily removed and replaced within one hour by even a minimally trained technician. Our main competitive advantage is that, unlike others before us, we've broken through the financial barrier of affordable on-site waste to energy. It's important to note that we also do not sell the bio CHP systems. Instead, we offer a service value proposition for business customers. This service value proposition is ideal for a few important reasons. Number one, no matter how big a customer balance sheet is, business customers prefer to use their capital for the core business, and not for energy or sustainability investments. Number two, we can provide immediate savings of at least 20% on power, thermal, and waste disposal costs with minimal capital outlay. And number three, the service model allows us to add additional power and carbon conversion modules in the near future. We're focused on three major market segments. Industrialized nations targeting 15 vertical markets that generate waste and have a thermal demand using an energy service business model. Island nations that are dependent on expensive and dirty diesel generation and a microgrid applications in developing nations, starting with plastic as a feedstock and using a PAYGO model. 2021 has been an exciting year for us at Anexor. We partnered with Halliburton Labs Accelerator, and they're gonna help us scale our manufacturing capabilities and help expedite our international launch. We're also part of the inaugural Google Climate Change Accelerator team, working on incorporating machine learning and predictive analytic technology to optimize system performance and remote monitoring for our systems, even the world's remote places in the world. And this week, we will close a strategic corporate Series A investment round with an $11 billion company that's also committed to building a clean and energy efficient world. We now have the funds to launch our product worldwide, and we will manufacture our bio CHP systems in our 40,000 square foot facility here in Tennessee and start installing systems at our Lighthouse customers in Nashville starting next quarter. We will then start shipping overseas in first quarter 2022 to fill commitments for over 1,500 systems. We're looking for strategic investors, alliances, customers, and future team members that share our vision to impact our climate and want to participate in the financial rewards of building a great company. Come join us and help us make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Lee and team. Question from the audience. What is your long-term vision for carbon credit monetization as you deploy your product in various regions of the world? Jason, hey, great question. Uh, and as you know, something we're very passionate about. We believe carbon and plastic credits will play a big part in combating climate change. And we're about to launch our carbon credit and plastic credit business that will allow companies to help make the most impact. Our carbon credits have some really unique advantages. First of all, they impact the most people because we can locate our systems where the waste is located and where renewable energy is needed the most, especially impacts women and children. Number two, our credits will be registered with the VERA standard, one of the most rigorous standards. Number three, we have a technology-based solution that can accurately measure each carbon credit. And finally, each carbon credit is tokenized using blockchain technology and our customer can either discard them, save them, or sell them through a carbon exchange. This provides the most transparency and flexibility for our customers. Right now we're working with several companies to customize these credits, and we plan on launching our carbon credit platform next quarter. This will allow us to start install systems in Africa, Latin America, Asia, starting next year. So again, we're excited about it. We think this is the key to deploying quickly without relying on expensive project financing. Thank you, Lee. Next, I'm happy to introduce Will from FarmTrace to tell us about his Vancouver-based startup building a software platform which delivers verified reforestation impacts created by farmers to brands wanting to reduce their climate footprint. Thanks so much, Jason. So the image that you're all looking at here is a piece of farmland in Latin America in the country of Nicaragua. And if you'd come here about eight years ago, it would have looked entirely like it does on the left land which had been historically deforested and is now being used to grow subsistence crops, earning the farmer growing those crops less than $2 a day. But about seven years ago, we started working with the farmer to grow the trees that you can see on the right alongside his crops. And since then, the farmer has grown 1,500 trees, which are sequestering 300 tons of CO2 
out of the atmosphere, helping to mitigate climate change. And we've sold that carbon to brands, generating a revenue of $2,000 and helping the farmer increase his annual income by 30%. My name's Will Sheldon. I'm the commercial director of FarmTrace and we're catalyzing tropical reforestation. So here's the thing. Farmers like Horatio here represent one of the biggest and most effective solutions to the climate crisis. There are 500 million small-scale farmers like Horatio who could be growing trees on their land. And if they were, it could deliver up to one third of the emissions needed to tackle the climate crisis. But the problem is, while lots of trees get planted, very few of them grow to become thriving forests, which effectively sequester CO2. And the biggest reason for that is that farmers are not able to make money from growing trees like they do other crops. And one of the reasons for that is farmers simply just don't know they could be selling the carbon sequestered from growing trees. And on the other hand, even if they do know, it's super complicated to do so, requiring expensive and complicated monitoring and reporting practices, which is just out of reach for your average farmer in the tropics. And so there's this massive potential that is being left unfulfilled to tackle the climate crisis. At the same time though, there are brands making climate commitments who are creating a huge demand for reforestation and want to pay people to grow trees to sequester carbon on their behalf. Enter FarmTrace. We help connect brands wanting to invest in reforestation to farmers in the tropics growing trees. And then we help those farmers grow trees and sequester carbon that do we, we deliver back to the brands to make claims against that carbon that's being stored. To date, we have an 88% success rate of growing trees and sequestering carbon. And we're working with 3,000 farmers in the tropics, increasing their incomes from growing 5 million trees. And those trees are sequestering 1.5 million tons on behalf of some of the world's leading brands. And all of this is enabling us to create cells of $7 million of trees and carbon. The reason for this success is we have a team with over 50 years of direct experience building some of the most effective and large-scale tropical reforestation projects in the world. And it was through this experience and an understanding of the first-hand challenges of scaling tropical reforestation that we built FarmTrace. And we've combined that experience with PhD-level expertise to create an elegant, simple, and practical solution that can be used on the ground. Here's how it works. The FarmTrace mobile app is used by organizations working with farmers to upload simple location and tree data. We then combine that data with remote sensing and assess it using machine learning analytics to generate forest and carbon assessments over time. And as the trees grow and sequester carbon, we then package those carbon impacts to deliver to the brands that paid for them. And throughout this whole process, we use the insights generated by FarmTrace to help those farmers grow their trees effectively to meet their targets. And how do we make money? We take a small commission from the tree and carbon sales that are delivered to brands. Today, the voluntary carbon market is worth 5.5 billion and it's anticipated to be 50 billion by 2030. And we believe we're uniquely placed to make tropical reforestation at the heart of that growth. We are on a path to grow 1 billion trees and be the world leaders in tropical reforestation. We're currently growing trees in nine countries around the world with thousands of farmers, with some of the world's leading brands, and working with partners who have access to millions of farmers who could be growing trees. We would welcome any brands who are interested in investing in reforestation and reducing their climate footprint to get in touch. And if you're an investor, we'd love to have an initial conversation as we plan out our growth over the next months and years. My name is Will Sheldon. We're FarmTrace. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks, Will. A question from one of our registrants. Can you share more about the onboarding process for new farmers and how FarmTrace will handle the onboarding of farmers at scale? Thanks, Jason. A great question. I'll break down my answer into a, a few parts. First is how we reach those farmers. And so we're partnering with local organizations on the ground, already working with farmers who want to grow trees. This includes NGOs, commodity traders, farmer cooperatives, and collectively the partners we're already working with on the ground have access to over 5 million farmers who could be growing trees. 
The second is then having identified those local partners is setting them up for success. And so we use our unique set of experiences and knowledge of building reforestation initiatives to help those organizations create an effective reforestation plan for scale for growing trees with their farmers. And then finally, using that plan, we have a comprehensive and engaging onboarding package into which we poured all our knowledge of how to effectively grow trees with farmers. And we use this package to help those organizations adopt our model and farm trace software. Often we'll use a train the trainer approach so that those local partners can scale organically with our model to grow trees at scale with farm trace. Thanks, Will. And with that, we've reached the halfway point of today's program. Before we dive into the rest of Demo Day, let's take a quick look back at the journey our founders have been through over the last 10 weeks. The things you can do with machine learning are truly incredible. Some of the most exciting examples I've seen recently have been through the work we're doing with startups around tackling climate change. And we recently launched our first accelerator in North America. We're helping startups use machine learning to tackle big challenges, from creating carbon negative concrete to making everything from office buildings to pet food more sustainable. Welcome everyone to Google's first ever Google for Startups Accelerator for Climate Change. I'm really, really excited to work with you, your teams, and your amazing companies over these next few weeks, and even more excited to connect you all as a cohort. Our goal is to help smallholder farmers in the tropics to grow trees. Our goal is to reconnect cities with nature. Our goal is to move several million buildings entirely off of fossil fuels in low-income American communities. Our goal is to transform building control, so we do heating, ventilation, and control solutions for commercial buildings. Our sort of company's focus is making buildings more comfortable using less energy. We are a plant-based pet food brand, so our goal and our mission is to remove animals from the food system. Carbicrete has developed and patented a technology that enables the production of cement-free, carbon-negative concrete. Our goal is to significantly reduce uh, uh, electricity and water consumption. We can turn a park DV into a stationary battery so you can make money and power your house. So our team has developed a modular energy system that can convert a variety of organic and plastic waste into clean energy. The Accelerator will kick off with each of you working with your mentors and Googlers to help define your program OKRs. Uh, then during week two, we'll dive into product and design and UX, specific to climate change and sustainability. After that, we'll talk all things tech, infrastructure, AI, and machine learning. I usually find that the, the models themselves, that's the easy part. It's the, uh, it's the data pipeline that's the hard part. And if you can get that right, uh, then the model parts will take care of themselves. We're actually heading back to an IoT session right now. And uh, I just wanted to say every session was excellent. We learned a lot. The team really enjoyed it. So we really focused on machine learning and AI and carbon credit monetization. Next, we'll shift gears a little bit and talk about growth and customer acquisition and sales. And then finally conclude the program diving into people and leadership. And of course, as always, we'll celebrate with our demo day and graduation. Thank you so much for all that everyone is doing through your wonderful work to address climate change. Congratulations and best of luck to you and your teams on the journey. Congratulations for completing the Accelerator. I hope that you found the mentoring and the overall program useful. And I wish all of you luck in both building up successful companies and having a real impact on reducing climate change. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. Thanks again, Google. Thanks, Google. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed our program recap. And congratulations again to all of our founders. Up next, I'd like to introduce Fermata Energy, a Charlottesville, Virginia-based startup that designs, supplies, and operates technology that turns electric vehicles into energy storage assets that combat climate change and dramatically lower the cost of ownership. Hi, we are Fermata Energy. We turn parked EVs into energy storage, and here's why. We need to decarbonize the electrical grid by integrating renewable energy. We need to decarbonize transportation by increasing EV adoption. And while we wait for all that to happen, 
We need to provide energy resilience to communities being impacted by climate change today. So here's the plan. In order to scale renewable energy, we need a cost-effective way to store solar and wind energy because today's stationary storage is too expensive. But it turns out that there's a much better solution parked outside our buildings and homes right where power is needed. If we could turn parked EVs into what is essentially free energy storage, then we could quickly become the solution to integrating renewable energy. What's more, if EVs can be paid to provide energy storage, their cost comes down and EV adoption accelerates for everyone. This is exactly what Fermata is doing right now. We provide a complete solution that lets EVs receive power from and provide power to the grid and buildings by integrating software, hardware options, and knowledge. There is no resource more valuable today and yet so underutilized as an EV. Tesla sold a billion dollars worth of power walls last year alone, and you can't buy one now, there's currently a shortage. Depending on the model, an EV is equivalent to four to eight power walls. That's like a pile of 40 to $60,000 of cash sitting on the hood. With recent announcements from Ford and VW, other automakers have realized this and are bringing more bi-directional vehicles to the market far sooner than was expected. While more bi-directional EVs are coming as soon as next year, there is already significant, significant capacity on the road. The combined energy storage just from sales of the modestly selling LEAF is far greater than the entire stationary grid energy storage industry, including every deployment by every company and every sector combined. Google X likes solutions that are 10X. Here's a 20X. Nissan sells about 15,000 Leafs a year, which is okay. They sell about 200,000 Sentras a year. Ford sells half a million pickup trucks a year. That's one pickup truck every 30 seconds. If those were the recently announced F-150 Lightning, which is bi-directional, Ford would have deployed 22 times the energy storage capacity that the entire stationary industry has in the last two decades. That's one year of sales of a single EV equaling 20 times an entire industry. EVs are the energy storage solution that our energy transition requires. And Fermata is doing this commercially today. This is our cloud software running on one of our customer sites in Boulder, Colorado. While COVID delayed us from deploying last summer, we finally began operating the site in January. What you see here is an EV producing almost $300 a month, which is more than it costs to lease. And this is just one app to manage bills. In higher price markets like California and the Northeast, we can earn over $400 a month. We are now repeating this all over the country and now adding and stacking multiple applications. Now think about someone who can't afford personal transportation, let alone an EV, and is having their power shut off on a regular basis because of wildfire. This technology not only provides access to clean mobility, it keeps the lights on by powering the building directly. We began deploying our beta platform late last year with utilities and fleet customers across the country and are planning a full commercial launch of our next gen system later this year. We are also looking for partners interested in understanding what this technology could mean for their own organizations. To that end, in the upper right-hand corner of the slide, you'll see a pic of yours truly with one of our systems at the new lab site in Brooklyn. Anyone listening has an open invitation to come by anytime, see a demo and learn more. Just let us know. And thank you so much, Google. Thank you, Fermata. Our audience would love to know what would be the biggest shift for EV owners when adopting Fermata's technology? And what are the immediate and the long-term benefits? Great question. For many people, buying a car is the first or second most exp expensive asset they will own. And it's a, it's a terrible investment, losing 20% of its value as soon as you drive it off a lot. This technology fundamentally changes that. Now your car has an ROI. This is so disruptive that it has implications for ownership models themselves. For example, we are working with many partners right now to provide this technology as a complete optimized service where you don't have to do anything and you don't have to own anything. You just get access to very inexpensive clean transportation. Over the long run, I'll share some thoughts uh, with you from one of our affordable housing partners in Boston. He sees this technology eventually making mobility something that is completely free. 
not unlike search, email, and other media. And that's very exciting. Thank you to Pramada. Up next, we will hear from Flair. Flair makes buildings more comfortable using less energy while promoting energy efficiency, electrification, and smart grid integration. Thanks, Jason. Hi, everyone. My name is Dan Myers, and I'm the co-founder and CEO at Flair. And as Jason mentioned, we focus on making buildings more comfortable using less energy. We have a really big problem. The poles are melting. The grid is failing. Our communities are flooding. Huge swaths of land are burning. And heat waves are getting more frequent and more deadly. This is our new reality. And air conditioning, which used to be a luxury, is now a life and death necessity. Ironically, though, air conditioning is only making things worse. Our homes require massive amounts of energy, often only to cool empty rooms. And all of these homes running AC on the hottest days of the year are driving frequent uh, blackouts and grid failures. Our air conditioning and heating, while helping us survive extreme weather, is also driving that same extreme weather in a positive feedback loop. So how do we break the cycle? Humans aren't going to stop using AC. In fact, we're accelerating our AC adoption. We have to make AC more efficient and more grid friendly. Electrification of heating is further exacerbating the same grid instability as well. We need to reduce the amount of energy we consume to heat and cool our buildings, and we need to coordinate our usage of heating and cooling to help avoid blackouts as well as provide the demand flexibility required for grid level electrification. Flare's solution is designed to transform physical energy assets like air conditioners and heaters into digital energy assets. Our platform encompasses market leading hardware and software to facilitate electric energy efficiency, and grid integration of the world's most common HVAC systems. Concretely, Flare Smart Vent systems make precision room-by-room -room energy del delivery practical, affordable, and comfortable for home and business owners. Flare eliminates some of the most wasteful energy practices, like heating and cooling empty rooms, as well as resolving some of the most frustrating comfort issues with central air, like uneven hot and cold spots. Central heating and cooling is North America's most common HVAC system, but globally, mini splits number over one and a half billion. Flare's Puck is the only fully wireless universal smart thermostat for the mini split market. Using the Flare Puck instantly upgrades any mini split into a digitally manageable and grid enabled smart heating and cooling system. In doing so, we can coordinate the world's vast number of mini splits into a manageable grid load to eliminate instability and promote grid level integration from solar and wind. And this isn't a hypothetical. Flare is now in over 10,000 homes and businesses. We are actively partnered with seven leading utilities with over 40 megawatts of energy delivery being managed on our platform. That's equivalent to eight utility scale solar power plants. In mainland China, Flare formed a joint venture with a partner selling 65% of the country's electricity. With this partner, we're transforming over 600 gigawatts of air conditioning into virtual power plants. Flare has been recognized by the World Energy Council, the Consortium of Energy Efficiency, and the World Bank as a critical solution to both heating, electrification, and sustainable cooling. We're also working with leading manufacturers, distribution partners, utilities, and governments, all to get our solutions deployed at scale. Our team has extensive experience building consumer hardware and energy systems, having worked at Tesla and Nest, as well as building best-in-class software experiences at Microsoft and Skype. We're also backed by leading climate investors and institutions, like the Rocky Mountain Institute, Lower Carbon Capital, Urban Us, and SOS Ventures, the world's most experienced hardware venture capitalists. Flair is growing fast, building on the nexus of climate change, global momentum, and electrification, and device connectivity to power the energy revolution. We're raising our Series A and looking for investors, partners, and customers to join. We can't wait to have you on board. Awesome job, Flair. One question from our audience. What are the main reasons someone would purchase Flair devices for the second time? How do you create repeat customers and recurring revenue? So Flair sells to utilities, HVAC pros, homeowners, and businesses. We have about 30% of our direct-to-consumer sales customers that buy multiple times. 
Uh, often what we see is a customer will come and buy a few units to test out in their house. They see it start to work and they're, they're excited and then they come back and they outfit the rest of their house. That's a really common experience we see. Um, we also have a really high repeat purchase rate, of course, on our pros channel. Uh, so those would be HVAC installers who are in houses constantly. And so every time they visit a new house and, and it seems like our solution is a great fit, uh, they'll buy a system and install it. On the recurring revenue side, however, um, we have two types of recurring revenue. So we have one that comes from large HVAC service organizations. They leverage our equipment and our enterprise API, essentially allowing them to manage their customer's fleet remotely and optimize some of their service calls so that they're not having to travel on site too frequently. And then the other big recurring revenue source for us is utility demand response programs, where essentially we provide uh, a, an easy solution for demand load management and flexibility, helping them avoid the need for peaker plants, which are often really dirty, uh, and also to help avoid blackouts. Thank you to the Flare team. Up next, we'll hear from Jerry, the founder of Heatworks, a Mount Pleasant, South Carolina-based startup that uses electronic controls and graphite electrodes to heat water instantly, endlessly, and precisely without energy loss. Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Callahan, the founder, inventor, and CEO of HeatWorks, where we are reinventing ways the world heats and uses water more efficiently. Every day, billions of people around the world use electricity to heat water. Everyone is wasting energy, water, and time. This water heating technology has not changed in over 150 years and inefficient, inferior, and wasteful. Several years ago, I thought it was time for a change. This is a picture of a typical heating element. All electrical heating elements heat water by heat transfer, i.e. they get really hot and transfer the heat to the water. This takes time, wastes energy and water, and results in poor temperature control. Over time, scaling and rusting of the metal heating elements causes loss of efficiency, premature failure, and produces impure hot water with lots of sedimentation. How do we do it? We actually use water as a heating element. And how do we do that? We use graphite electrodes and electronic controls and pass controlled electrical currents through the water. This transfer converts electrical energy into thermal energy, creating instant, efficient liquid heating with better than plus or minus one degree temperature control. Nothing in our heating system gets any hotter than the desired water temperature, resulting in zero scaling and corrosion over time, even in hard and soft water. Scaling causes conventional heating elements to lose up to 50% of their efficiency, which takes even more power to heat the water. This is a picture of a little demonstrator called Sparky. If you look in the middle of the picture, there's two gray electrodes, which are graphite electrodes. And as you see, as I hit the switch, the water boiled instantly. Uh, we call it hot water at the speed of light. The three things that are critical about our technology are the purity, there's no contaminants or scaling, precision, super accurate temperature control, and performance, up to 40% and 10% water savings, endless hot water, and full Internet of Things connectivity. Our goal is to have products or commercial partners, partnerships that incorporate our technology in each of our core markets by 2022. Here's our product that's in the market today. It's the Model 3 residential water heater, which is about 12 inches on a side. It does a complete house, and without any user intervention, saves up to 40% on energy, which is about $240 a year in the United States. It can save up to about 2,100 gallons of water per year. And interestingly enough, if all homes that have electric water heaters converted to Model 3 water heater, we, the country could close 12 coal-fired power plants. Really big advantage for changing the climate problem. Uh, we also have a Wi-Fi app, which you can control the temperature, monitor the amount of hot water energy you use each day, and you can, you can use that to uh, manage your hot water use. You can also monetize the uh, energy and water used by plugging in how much you pay per kilowatt hour and per thousand gallons of water. And you can see how much every gallon of hot water costs you every single day. Our next product, which is in pre-production at this point, is called Tetra Countertop Dishwasher. It's the world's only self-contained countertop dishwasher. In other words, you don't have to hook it up to plumbing at all. It uses only three liters of water to do three complete place settings. And it cleans 50% more dishes using 40% less water in 50% of the time than the leading brand. Huge water savings, three liters of water versus 45 liters to hand wash. One family using Tetra once a day would save 15,000 liters of water a year. Very significant. Our next product, which is behind Tetra in the development cycle, is called Duo. It's a carafe 
that holds about a liter of water uh, that delivers either filtered room temperature water or hot water. Uh, you can set the temperature exactly what you want, like 175 degrees for green tea or 200 for coffee. Uh, it's perfect for coffee tea aficionados. And the energy savings here is significant because you only heat the amount of water you need when you need it. So you just pick it up and pour it out the exact temperature. Uh, water comes out at the exact volume that you want. We're gaining momentum. We've got proven and scalable technology across many verticals. We've got really strong IP protection. We have a lot of significant interest from strategics to either partner with us on the products that we just demonstrated or to license our technology to make their products better. We've got 25,000 people on the wait list to buy Tetra. Workforce has grown from two to 20 people. And our contribution to climate change is to provide a significantly better experience, saving people time while significantly reducing energy and water consumption. And that's what we're doing here at HeatWorks. Thank you, Jerry. Question to you from our audience. What have been your biggest barriers to success? And what do HeatWorks end users say about the product? The two biggest barriers of success have been actually just inventing the technology. You know, that's quite a challenge itself. Think like wall phone to cell phone. Um, the, the other biggest barrier we have is really adoption. When you have a really new revolutionary technology, uh, especially if it's electronic um, compared to, you know, a bare wire technology that everybody else uses, it takes a while to get traction from strategic partners. Uh, but we're making a lot of uh, progress in that and we're excited about that. Uh, Consumers love what we're doing. I mean, you know, the Model 3 water heater, say 40% of energy and 10% of water passively. You can say more if you're active about it by using the app and measuring what you've used. Touch with a dishwasher is mesmerizing. We've got 25,000 people signed up to buy it. Uh, three liters of water for three place settings, you know, is really phenomenal. Uh, and Duo, the, the uh, carafe is even cooler in many ways because you get to heat the water temperature exactly what you want it to be like 175 for green tea or 200 for coffee. And so that really captures, you know, the efficient out of uh, attention. Amazing work, Jerry. Thank you. Next, we have Ryan from Wild Earth, a Berkeley, California-based startup with a plant-based pet food company that harnesses biotech to create cruelty-free products with less environmental impact. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Bethencourt. I'm the CEO and founder of Wild Earth. We are the leading healthy plant-based pet food company based here in the U.S. Wild Earth grew 7x last year in terms of revenue. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the press around the incredible growth of the plant-based human space. The plant-based pet space has seen uh, significant, if not even larger growth uh, year on year. These are actually all of our products, the Wild Earth products. So uh, we have two SKUs, which are actually uh, the plant-based dog foods you can actually see here, the little and large. Um, we have three different uh, flavor uh, treat SKUs, and then we have three supplements, which we launched at the end of last year. Um, we've really enjoyed being able to, to show uh, the growth in the plant-based space and support it. And we're also incredibly excited for the continued growth in a significantly larger market. So for those of you that are not familiar with the pet, uh, the global pet market, it's a $90 billion market. In the US, it's growing about 4.5%. We're particularly excited about the growth that we're seeing in India and China. Wild Earth is available both in India and in Hong Kong in China as well, where we see 20% year-on-year growth. Uh, we think that that is a long-term trend. Current estimates are about $113, $115 billion by 2025, not far. And these markets are going to continue to grow both in the US, Europe, and across Asia as well. We're really excited about the positive health benefits that we've seen. We call it the wild earth effect. Um, our pet parents, we actually, at the, at, shortly after the start of the pandemic, we actually asked our pet parents um, who'd been feeding wild earth uh, for three months or more, 3,000 of them, um, if they'd seen any positive health benefits to feeding wild earth. 86% uh, of them actually reported that they had, um, and they actually uh, showed a whole bunch of improvements from digestive health, reduced itching and scratching, all the way through to you know, um, some of the kind of benefits they see on the skin and coat and things like that. So we're very excited about the, the, the health benefits and it's an area we wanna to continue to dive into, getting more and more data to really support the positive health benefits of a plant-based diet for our pets. We have very strong intellectual property. You can see this is a composition of matter patent. It's an awarded uh, composition of matter patent for the use of yeast. Yeast is our primary protein source. Uh, we really are 
the leader, not just in plant-based, um, but also in fungi-based. And our aim is to be a leader in the cell-based space as well. Uh, we're, we're currently um, working with several partners to actually develop uh, cell-based uh, meat products for pet food as well, targeting launch within approximately a year or two once, uh, once, once the window is open in the US. Our unit economics are very strong. We have 57% uh, gross margins and a 31% contribution margin. So delivered to, to your door, we still have a 31% margin with margin improvements as we continue to scale as well. Our customers love us too. You can, you're very welcome to check out um, uh, all the incredible reviews. We have thousands of reviews from very satisfied and happy pet parents. Um, this was actually one of the, uh, the feedback was actually one of the reasons why we, we started to investigate the wild earth effect. Uh, and we have very high retention as well, somewhere between 90 to 95% by month four. Um, and so we, we really think that um, the killer app uh, for pet food is both plant-based and subscription as well and direct to consumer. We've, we've uh, benefited from a lot of the incredible growth that's happened over the last, uh, over the last two years in the plant-based space. As you can see, we grew approximately 7x uh, last year, and our aim is to grow another 3 to 4x uh, this year. We have an incredible team uh, and incredible advisors, uh, both Mark Cuban, who I closed on Shark Tank uh, in 2019, and Mike Dubin, the founder and CEO of Dollar Shave Club, have really helped us really scale a uh, consumer-based business. And we're really focused on sustainability as well. So 25 to 30% of the meat we consume in the US goes to our pets to make little brown balls of kibble. We think we can really change that. It doesn't have to be the case. They can actually be plant-based with a fully nutritionally complete diet. Um, and that, that is our mission at Wild Earth, to bring it not just to the US, but globally as well. We have incredible investors. Uh, our last round was led by At One Ventures. Uh, Tom Chi was the co-founder of Google X. Uh, as well as some incredible investors uh, in the consumer space. So Mars, uh, Peter Thiel, who led through Thiel Capital and, uh, and Founders Fund and Felicis Ventures as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Wild Earth. My question for you, how do you instill confidence in customers of Wild Earth's ability to accurately recommend plant-based foods, supplements, and treats for such a wide variety of dog breeds? So one of the big questions we get asked is, um, how do we instill confidence in the quality of our products at Wild Earth and plant-based diets? So the first is that we really started with a team of scientists and veterinarians and veterinary nutritionists to develop our products. Um, all of them are, meet the nutri minimum nutritional requirements for, for dog food. These are called AFCO guidelines. Uh, but not only that, we, we meet and exceed. So we, we go beyond the minimum nutritional requirements. We don't just add essential proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. We add prebiotic fibers for good gut health. We add omega-3s and 6s, um, which are really important for skin and, and brain health. Uh, we supplement with taurine. Some senior dogs, as they get older, make less of it themselves. So we go beyond what's required to make better products. We also put all of the studies that we've done on our website, as well as independent third-party studies on our website as well for pet parents that are very curious uh, about plant-based diets, uh, the safe, safety and health of feeding a plant-based diet. Thanks, Ryan and the Wild Earth team. Last but not least, I'm thrilled to introduce Zach from Zalbin, out of Chicago, Illinois. Zalbin is designing the world's smartest green products, like sensor-driven, IoT-connected green roofs and living walls, to create healthier and happier environments for humans and our planet. Hi, I'm Zach, and I'm the CEO and founder of Zalbin. And I would like to think about the last time you were in nature and how it made you feel. Maybe it was going on a walk in the park, mountain bike riding, hiking, or just escaping the weekend to the beach. We feel happier and healthier, right? However, how are we spending most of our time today? We're spending 90% of our lives indoors. It impacts our mental health, our energy level, our sleep rhythm. It's an unhealthy separation. But what if we reimagined our indoor environments and reconnect with the things that make us happier and healthier? We designed a product to do just that. We designed the world's smartest living wall, a product that celebrates innovation, sustainability, and invites nature back into our lives. We call it the Model Z. 
And now is the perfect time to be proactive about what the future will look like. It doesn't have to be more of the same. It could be better, brighter, more beautiful, more grounded and healthier for people and our planet. Design with hydroponic technology. No dirt, bugs, mold. It's eco-friendly, 10 times more water efficient than soil, 100% recyclable, self-irrigates, monitors plant health 24-7, improves indoor air quality, and plug and play. All you need is a wall and an outlet. We have patents submitted. And with this slow return back to pre-pandemic normalcy, companies are now looking at new ways to embrace health and wellness in the workplace on a larger scale. Our products are modular, so you can connect Model Z units together to create lush, happier spaces for people and companies to work and thrive. And there's an ROI to companies. Their employees now are 40% more productive. The stress levels are reduced by 30 to 60%, 15% more idea generation, 20% less sick days. And it's user-friendly. Our products save time. There's no dealing with contractors or expensive installations. Simply order online and have the product delivered to you. We're also cost effective. Today, living walls are customized, which are 18,000 to 30,000. Our products are made to order. The plant and surface industry is booming. It's a $15 billion market. The two driving forces behind are LEED and well certifications. Every building and modern office must meet these standards. And our turnkey products make it faster and cost effective to achieve these certifications. Our business model is product as a service. So customers go online to purchase their Model Z. We have 78% product margins, SaaS to monitor the system in real time, and reoccurring monthly revenue stream of $200 per month per unit with 60% margins. Our dashboard gives our customers peace of mind. We're incredibly asset light. Our team works with the world's largest interior landscaping company to work under the Zobin brand for product delivery and monthly plant care. We're working with the world's largest companies. And with employees returning back to work, our pipeline is more than tripled last quarter. And so far, a third of those proposals have converted into sales or pre-orders. And right now, our team is focused on scaling and executing deliveries to create magical experience with our customers. Where do we go from here? We believe the future is green, that we're not just disrupting a $15 billion plant service industry, but sparking a green revolution. This is for a project to build 2,000 net zero homes over the next five years. Help buildings save as much as 75% in AC cooling and 25% in heat savings, but also helping cities improve air quality. And green roofs to help 80% in water storm management. We see an endless opportunity for technology to be applied. We've been humbled by the interest in our business as we are about to close our seed round. We are now interested in meeting strategic investors with whom we can build a relationship leading up to our Series A or to potentially consider making room in this round before we close. Thank you so much for your interest. If you'd like to, you can please contact me at zsmith at zobin.com. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Uh, one final question from our viewers. How do you see your product scaling with both commercial and residential customers? Could this technology be applied to cities? And what are some of the environmental benefits? We see our product scaling with co-working spaces, large offices. And to give you an example, we have a pilot for 10 miles of units, and the plan is to roll out to 100 locations. So this particular pilot uh, customer value is a $10 million opportunity. And again, 200,000 in annual plant subscriptions. So we feel with just a few large clients, we have a pretty good scale to hit 50, 100 million just in the next few years. And that's a wrap. On behalf of Google and everyone who made this program possible, I want to say a tremendous thank you. Thank you to our 10 startups and the awesome teams behind them. It has been a true honor and a privilege to work with you all. Thank you to the Googlers and partners who generously offered mentorship and support to our founders and for all the work that you do in the ecosystem. 
And lastly, thanks to all of you. A huge thank you to our viewers for tuning in and learning more about these great companies. And as always, we have one final call to action for all of our viewers. To our investors and partners out there, our founders would love, love, love to continue the conversation. To potential customers, visit their websites, learn more about their awesome tech and the companies that they're building. And finally, to all of the climate tech enthusiasts out there, please spread the word on Demo Day. Interested in connecting with our founders, reach out anytime or email us directly. And finally, congratulations and wishing you all a fantastic final months of summer. Thank you.